Welcome to Real Physics. This is about the Machian Gravity Meeting recently held in Bonn with Dennis Brown, Jonathan Fay, Jan Preuss and myself. The talks and discussions are a little bit more technical than usual, thus if you're interested in the details I encourage you to look up my Variable Speed of Light playlist or the papers linked in this video. Enjoy watching! So, if you remember, this was this metric I had derived. Um, and I've split it up into two parts, right? And this part is what's going to enable uh, invariance on the rotations of your model universe. And then the question is what is this factor in front? What's the purpose of this factor in front? The scalar potential from Shower's theory, which becomes this thing this metrical generalization. Uh, so first of all, let's remember what, what was the point of deriving gravity, deriving this part of the gravitational field. So my claim was the weissner shama hypothesis, I'm talking about in, in my paper, says that uh, gravity is a necessary consequence, or arises as like a necessary consequence of relativity of inertia, right, at the cosmological scale. Um, so I want to make sure that the inertial forces, which are represented in this part of the metric, um, have a material origin, and that that material origin is covered by the matter of the universe. And so this, this U, is going to be a function of the momentum distribution of the rest of the matter in the universe. Okay. Then what is the role of this? Like, what If we already have invariance now on the rotations, then what's the point of having a scalar part of the potential in the first place? Right. Uh, and my claim is that you can justify this and potentially derive it from a, an analogous symmetry condition to, so this is this is sort of well under rotation. So an analogous symmetry condition of, so what, what should I call it? Like a, oh, I had a name for this. Scale inertia hypothesis, I call it something like this. Which is that the scalar part of the gravitational field, I'm gonna claim, arises as a necessary consequence of the relativity of scale, right? And so the, I'm sort of trying to describe conceptually how to think about this. So in classical mechanics, you have absolute inertia, which means that something, something is moving rectilinearly in uniform motion, uniformly and rectilinearly this direction, and it keeps doing so. So what is it that allows it to keep doing so? Well, for Newton, it's absolute space. It moves with respect to absolute space, and absolute space stays invariant, and so it continues doing that, right? Uh, uh, and, and then the pro we want to get rid of absolute space, so we have to make sure that this motion of this particle is defined with respect to other masses, right? Similarly, there's another kind of like a it, problem in classical mechanics that even math didn't notice and that nobody really took, uh, really was conscious of it this, this time, even during kind of these interesting epistemological critiques in the late 19th century, uh, which is that you, you take a solid body and you, you make it move or, or anything with respect to other bodies, and it stays the same size, approximately speaking. What is it that allows it to stay the same size with respect to the other bodies? But it has to be, in, in a kind of Newtonian world, it has to be that its size is absolute with respect to some absolute measure of size, right? Its size isn't determined in relation to all of the other bodies in some kind of like material way, right? So I'm going to claim that there's an, ana an analog of Max principle that says that scale needs to be determined fully relational, right? And then we can also make an analog of this 
a hypothesis about gravity that says that scale is determined relationally and that the gravitational field is what's going to do that determination, right? And the way that you would derive this is by doing the same method as, you know, you, you, you take a, in this case, like a Minkowski space, uh, Minkowski metric, and you rotate it to determine the centrifugal Courier force terms, and then you bind those to the matter. In exactly the same way, what we can do is take a Minkowski metric, uh, scale it, and then, or, or scale, scale the entire universe, right? So you take, you take a model of the universe, you, you double its size, and you require that the metric has to co-vary along with the, the model of the universe, so that the relation of the metric to the distances in the universe stays the same, right? Um, and I'm claiming that this is what this allows you to do, this factor in the front. And because this factor is going to be... Uh, it will be a scale factor, basically. Exactly. So it's it's like proportional. <coughs> it's proportional to these distances here, right? So now, if if you apply some scale transformation to your model of the universe, then you'll have like r goes to some factor times r. You'll have in your in the terms of your metric, you'll have dr, where all your space terms go to alpha dr phi which is inversely proportional to r, goes to alpha minus 1 phi, right? And therefore, uh, your physically measured length scales, which I'll call dr dash, is actually, this is equal to phi dr, and this becomes an invariant, right? Because the, the changing of dr is compensated by the changing of phi, right? And so this is like the thing that you physically measure, which is the relation of your actual your distance in your coordinate system to how the the metric, the size of the metric in the coordinate system, right? The scales of the metric in the coordinate system. Uh, so that gives you a measurable distance, right? And the whole point is that under under these scale transformations, then the gravitational field allows you to have the invariance of all measurements, right? And the, re the reason we have this relation, of course, is because uh, you know the metric, the terms in the metric. Are quadratic in dr, and, so, and this is also phi squared, right? So it works out if I, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so that's, that's sort of my tentative explanation for the scalar part of the gravitational force. Uh, so we have on one hand, the vector part of the gravitational force can be explained by Max principle, because you need information about the, the motion of the particles. And the scalar part of gravitational force can unclearly be explained by the scale invariance requirement, um, which is analogous to breathing in Max's principle. All right. So, what do you think? Yes, I agree. I believe this is very important too, and it's uh, also just the uh, thing suggested by Dirac's large numbers because they. Uh, uh, relate the size of elementary particles to the entire cosmos too, and so obviously uh, the scale of things is somehow cosmologically determined. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and this scale factor, of course, would lead to potentially these cosmological evolution phenomena, like. The, the, uh, potentially the redshift and things like this, right? Because yeah. Yeah. As, as the evolution, uh, the cosmos ages, this figure in front of the metric gets larger, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's the basic idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe it's perfectly consistent with uh, Dirac's large numbers, we were discussing this half a year ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I believe also. I, I agree. I mean, you could even if you're talking about the scale factor, if you allow me. Um, I mean, we have these cosmology with variable scales, and and sum over n over r is is just one uh, aspect, I guess. 
all this should be also proportional to absolute uh, time and again proportional not just to absolute time and would be proportional to the uh, square of the horizon and at the same time proportional to 1 over c squared right and if you want even to uh, yield not absolute <laughs> electrodynamics so uh, yeah I, I mean of course nobody would, would say this is a different universe if you double the size of the mm -hmm. elementary particles right. and double the size of the of the cosmos yeah. and, and just uh, but they need to yeah. distinguish in every moment which is uh, which one is the absolute scale and which one is the relative uh, scale that changes but the, the sort of the, the idea I have here is like um, you can imagine like if you were to stretch out all of the all of the celestial bodies, like all of the large masses, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what happens. Pull them apart, then they would make the mm -hmm. uh, the size of small things would bounce back to to compensate, right? That the, mm -hmm. they the, there's a kind of causal priority of the the large masses of conditioning the the local system, right? Mm -hmm. As the uh, matter and these particles would grow to in the yeah. proportion, they would grow proportionally, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, in the evolution of the universe, they should rather shrink than grow, but yeah, yeah, exactly. anyway. Yeah. Exactly, uh, because, because the potential gravitational potential. I mean, the result is that you get this, and then the, the, <coughs> the consequence of this mm -hmm. is that as the gravitational potential increases, then all of the particles shrink. Right. So you see the sum there, and in cosmic evolution, more ma masses come into the horizon, and mm -hmm. uh, therefore this sum gets larger. Yeah. Overall, but if you just uh, uh, as a Gedanken experiment scale the entire universe, the sum would become smaller, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But so it's it's just a symmetry, right? That that mm -hmm. that, that kind of scaling doesn't have a physical meaning. That the, there is physical content as a result because of this uh, effect of what, yeah. If you have more particles in your universe, then then it's gonna it's going to to produce these effects, right? So it's a, it's the same thing with this, like this other relativity condition. If you have this relativity condition, then you add the max hypothesis about the masses being responsible, and then you still get all of this physics as a result, right? You get frame drag and, uh, and all of that stuff, right? Uh, so I'm claiming that potentially you can derive the whole of gravity, like you can have like the, the vector part from the rotation invariance, condition of the cosmological scale and the scale apart from the scale invariance condition of the cosmological scale. Um, and that's my hope is that <laughs> that's like a satisfactory theory of gravity that you know is, is actually justified. Right? As I understand, I mean you're pulling out this factor of pi squared out of the metric. Mm -hmm. So but this should have an evolution in cosmological times, right? That's yeah, phi would be or phi squared would be subject to, to change. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So what you what you have inside would be kind of a time independent thing that uh, rules physics or yields general relativity. You put you put that out. I, I'm just wondering if this is necessary or possible in in Every to, to take out, to yeah, take to out take the factor. Out the factor. Well, the only reason I'm doing it is to to separate this part, which is responsible for, which allows you to get like rotation invariance, mm -hmm. um, and which really only involves like the vector yeah. in terms of, of the the gravitational yeah. for vector potential, yeah. and and this part, which I'm claiming, uh, allows you to get scale invariance, right? And maybe there is a nice That's interpretation because usually in general relativity, if you calculate relativistic effects, you don't care about time evolution, right? So um, this would circle back all the uh, time evolution into conventional uh, relativistic effects, which are included in your in your tensor, in your metric, and all the all the time evolution you you putting that out, which is reasonable if you look at, at uh, relativistic effects like perihelion or whatever. There is, you don't need cosmological time evolution. If you but but this, I mean, this, this factor mm -hmm. uh, is very important for, for, the, for, general, like, uh, for normal relativistic effects. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a cosmological term because th this is where you get like a, But you uh, can consider it as a constant for if you do the calculations at a certain moment, right? Yes, but, but also, uh, so I should point out also like, so the C, the C here is already gravitationally affected, so, so this is not the invariant light speed, this is like the gravitationally I affected see, light see. speed, so, so C squared is like, like yeah. phi minus 4 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. times the, the, the gravitationally unaffected C mm -hmm. squared. Mm -hmm. And so if you bring this back in the metric and ignore all the u's, mm -hmm. you get like phi minus 2, phi squared, phi squared, phi squared, right? And that's the the close analog of the Minkowski metric. Mm -hmm. It gives you it gives you the um, uh, like uh, the normal test of, of GR, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the use I can imagine as smeared out uh, from integration. Uh, yeah, the, the velocity the, induced by so sort of the general the general yeah like um, so if you were to integrate all of the velocities of the distant of all of the distance masses. Um, uh, in proportion to their distance, mm -hmm. or inverse proportion to their distance, mm -hmm. and then uh, add all of that up, you just get a vector at every point, right? So, yeah. so as it was then by Shanti, the point vector here, potential, yeah. that's basically. Like uh, you, would, you would have like some vector mm -hmm. that tells you how much where the universe is moving with respect to us here, and, and and that vector would be slightly different at each point. So if you're spinning, then you have like a a bit of a vector field going around you, and, and that causes a coherent centrifugal forces. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's mm. that's a, the basic idea with these U's. So, so they are they have a material origin. Uh, they should really be U of like of X mass distribution. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and given by some integral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah my ten tentative model. <laughs> okay, okay. There's still some problems, but